In this video, we'll dive a little deeper into Kinesis data streams and some of the key concepts behind it. Before we do so, let's do a quick recap of the key components that make up streaming analytics. The first component is that of the source. As an example, you can have clickstream data coming from mobile devices and web applications uh, as a source. Uh, you then have the stream ingestion layer. So this is where you could have an app tier that is collecting source data, such as clickstream data, and then publishing it to the stream storage layer. In our case, that would be Kinesis data streams. And then there's the stream processing layer and lastly, there's the destination. Okay, here's a simple architecture that brings all of these components together. And here, what I'd like to emphasize is the consumption part of it on the far right. And within the AWS family, you can see that you have a number of options for consuming from Kinesis data streams. You have Amazon Kinesis Data Analytics. You can use Spark on Elastic MapReduce, Amazon EC2, and AWS Lambda. Let's spend some time looking at some of the key requirements that streaming workloads need. Kinesis Data Streams provides high availability, strong durability, high read concurrency, granular scaling, and configurable data retention right out of the box. And building on this list, are the higher level requirements that you see on top there. And this, these are requirements that Kinesis Data Streams facilitates. These include the ability to fan out to multiple consumers and the ability to replay data to handle downstream failures. So what do you get when you provision a Kinesis Stream? At its core, a stream is made up of shards. And a shard is the fundamental unit of throughput and scale. And each shard gives you the ability to ingest up to one megabyte per second and 1,000 transactions per second. And any shard can emit up to two megabytes per second. You have, by default, a retention period of 24 hours, and you can increase this to up to seven days. And as I mentioned earlier, Kinesis makes it easy to scale in and out depending on your workload needs. And the way you do this is by changing the number of shards in your Kinesis application outright, or you can actually split an existing shard into two or merge two shards into one. This gives you a lot of flexibility in responding to the needs of your workload. So we have shards. How do we route data into one or more shards that are part of your stream? So let's look at what a payload that goes into Kinesis looks like. You can think of a payload as having a partition key and the rest of it essentially being a data blob. Kinesis does not enforce schema. It does not care what's in the data blob. However, it is important that you specify the partition key. You as the publisher have to specify this partition key for every message. Kinesis then takes this partition key, hashes it, and deposits it in the shard corresponding to the resulting hash value. And each shard in a stream has a hash range. And taken together, these hash ranges make up a contiguous range of hash values for the stream as a whole. Earlier, I mentioned how each shard supports one megabytes per second in ingest capacity and two megabytes per second of egress capacity. What if you wanted to add even more consumption capacity to a shard? Well, now you can use a relatively new feature within Kinesis Data Streams called Enhanced Fanout to support additional consumers. And each of these consumers has a dedicated two megabytes per second pipe available to it per shard. Now, in addition to the added throughput, 
Enhanced fan out facilitates lower latency delivery of messages to consumers. Now this is because messages are pushed to registered consumers via a long lived HTTP2 connection. Whereas without enhanced fan out, consumers would have to pull the stream for data.